We're going to begin this afternoon's session with Jan Nigren. From 1994 to 1996, Jan was Minister for Coordination in the Swedish government. He has held positions as State Secretary of Civil Affairs and the State Secretary of the Ministry of Defence, as well as being Vice President of Saab and Chairman of the Board of the Swedish Defence Material Administration. He is currently Chairman of the Steering Committee at the Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering Sciences, and today we'll talk about the effects of digitalization. So please join me in welcoming Jan to the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you so much for inviting me for this to this event. Uh, as you will soon realize, I think I belong to the same group that Jun uh, told us that he belongs to, which means that I am uh, not an expert. I'm not an expert in anything, to be honest with you. But uh, uh, as you could hear, uh, from the short presentation of me, you know now, my, now you know my name, and you know part of my background, uh, uh, and uh, which means that I've been in politics for a long time. I've been in the private sector for quite a long time. I'm not going to tire you with with more of what I have done during lifetime because long CVs only sort of tells you one thing, and that is that you are getting old. Uh, the reason why I'm here is, of course, the connection or the relation with IVA, an Ingenieursvetenskapsakademin in Swedish, uh, stands for, in English, Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering Science. Uh, uh, and this is one of the oldest uh, engineering science academies, turning 100 next year. And like Patrick Feldström, uh, who you will hear from next. I'm a member of the Academy. Academy. The mission of this Academy is to, to highlight issues that are important for society, often those related to research and technology, uh, to explore them and propose measures uh, that sort of generally benefit all of Sweden. And the Academy have always carefully safeguarded our independence and politicians and others are therefore rather keen to listen to and discuss issues with us. One can say that this Academy have so far a little bit of a better reputation than another Academy that I don't want to mention this time. Um, so right now I'm chairing a project called Digitalization for Increased Competitiveness. And Patrick is also involved in this project, and I guess that he has a finger in having me here. Uh, 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 thank you for that. Uh, if I have say something that is that you like and is positive, please talk to me. If there is some objections, you can always talk to Patrick. Uh, the, the projects, the steering committee is composed of members from many different areas of society. And th this steering committee is, of course, important, but perhaps even more important is the work carried out by the 40 or so people who are members of the project's three work groups. Their task is to delve deep into the project's three main topics, and they are digital infrastructure, which Patrick is heading. And uh, uh, the second is the need for competence in this area. And the third is integrity. Um, and the project started just over a year ago and will end in March next year. And now we start to see where our analysis are, is leading and what type of proposal we might present. And I just want to use a few minutes of your time to elaborate around some of the possible conclusions and questions that are up in the air in this project. There will be no slides. You will probably recognize this as a lecture from one of your old professors. Um, the reason why is not only that I might be a little bit lazy, 
but since the project is halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through, uh, I, I would like to sort of present some thoughts. But the conclusions, the, 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 the real conclusions, will be taken later on by the three working groups and the, and the steering group. And, and I, I do not want to leave too much of ball points and shorts after me, because there will be reports, as I said, seminars and so on, when, when the job is sort of carried out fully. Um, e this project is introduced by EVA itself, like any other projects that EVA is working with. There is no one that has ordered it. We have no customer uh, that is, is paying us. Uh, it's uh, it, it, the, the project, like all the projects from EVA, is sort of formed by EVA, the academy itself, because EVA thinks there is a need for it. And, and uh, the, 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 the reason for it, uh, I don't think that I need to tell you that. Uh, I'll come back to that later on. But it's important to say that, that this is a, 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 the academy itself has taken the initiative and, and the, uh, the target for the result is probably not you. It's uh, decision makers of different kind in politics, business and otherwise. We would be very happy if you, who have quite a good knowledge, I guess, about what we are discussing, would agree upon what we come to. But I think that most of what I'm going to say is probably something that you might already know. Anyhow, w one important aspect of, of our project is to sort of demystify the concept of, of digitalization. Quite simply, we, we want to identify and describe the fantastic opportunities that are offered, but also recognize that we as a society must be able to manage the risks and tackle the problems involved in order to take full advantage of this opportunity. We see digitalization as one in a series of industrial revolutions. And I'm not going to count them up because you know that. And we now see a structural transformation driven by digitalization based on new possibilities to rapidly process and use large quantities of data, especially with new technologies such as AI. This is fascinating, but not particularly mysterious. Uh, one key issue for Sweden is how we should uh, use digitalization to increase uh, our competitiveness. And we are focused on competitiveness because it is a matter of survival for Sweden. We are a small, open economy, and the fact that we progressed from being one of Europe's poorest countries at the end of the 18th century to one of the wealthiest today uh, is mainly, at least, explained by our success uh, uh, in becoming more competitive compared to the rest of the world. We did this by being good at research and innovation, and this resulted in fantastic Swedish companies such as Ericsson, Saab, Volvo, IKEA, and so on. I know there are other companies that are more into that type of business than you are, but this is history. So that's why I'm mentioning these companies. Uh, we, we are facing a great challenge. That is probably something that you also know. In a short space of time, uh, many of our social services have become digital and dependent on an efficient internet connection. And meanwhile, we have deregulated the expansion of the digital infrastructure in past Televerket. For example, uh, 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 controlled telephony, cables and operation and communication systems, etc. Those of you who are from Sweden probably knows, even if you are a little bit younger than those of us who really remember Televerket. Uh, at that time, the communication infrastructure was organized in the form of a silo model. And I think that you probably recognize the 
the picture. Uh, the, the deregulation of the telecom market has, however, resulted in a situation where different actors are responsible for different parts and level of the system. We call this the Lasagne model. Meat, sauce, etc., layered between sheets of pasta. Lasagne has uh, multiple layers, but when we eat it, as all of us uh, who love lasagne knows, each bite creates a whole experience. That could be good and bad, but still, it creates an, uh, a, 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 an experience that is sort of kept together. The problem is that the way in which we are controlling and coordinating digital infrastructure in many respects still resembles a silo model. Responsibility at the national government level is divided between different ministers and, and, and different ministries. Many of our public agencies and authorities are doing excellent work addressing issues relating to digital infrastructure, but coordinating between them is based more on good individual initiatives than on organized cooperation. Many politicians and decision makers understand far too little about the vulnerability of the system. And I might be able to say that since I have spent at least 30 years of my life in politics. Um, and, and we see this, as, this is a big problem, a real big problem. And this could be one of the reasons for the absence of better coordination and or vice versa. The lack of coordination could in fact also lead to a lot of mistakes and, and, and wrong decisions. So what is the best way to coordinate and control digitalization. Well, without going into details, we believe that the government needs a coordination function with the power to act to fill the void that exists today is in three, mainly three areas. There are probably more. First, uh, the government should be responsible for coordination and prioritization of the expansion of all parts of Sweden and Sweden's digital infrastructure. This means uh, uh, working with government agencies, county councils and municipalities, and not least the private sector, of course. Note that I'm not talking about control, but about coordination and creating the necessary conditions and thereby ensuring that we have a robust infrastructure to meet the needs of a digitalized society. It is important to make sure that the various control mechanisms that exist are used in the right way. We need to propose the right combinations of legislation, oversight and public procurement to improve the digital infrastructure. The second area is overall responsibility for ensuring that there are common standards and platforms on which the basic systems and applications are built. Roughly speaking, this is about the technical core of the digitalization. It can perhaps be compared to the water supply and everything that happens from the water works until the water reaches our taps. The equipment we have in our bathroom or kitchen is another matter. The third area involves overall responsibility for infrastructure and basic systems for cybersecurity. In other words, issues of national security. Asking the average Swede about this, he or she would probably think and answer that, isn't all this in place? Uh, you probably know better. It is not. Efforts are being made to address all of these issues today within different agencies and organizations in a sort of bottom-up process, where each agency is doing a good job based on its own capacity and knowledge. But there is no coordination, at least too little. In particular, there is no organized effort in terms of people in different agencies and organizations who are focusing 
on similar issues and who could be meeting and agreeing on ways to use their shared knowledge. So that we, as a society, could benefit more from their work. Relationship with the private sector could and should, of course, also be developed much more. It is a strange experience to have met so many people from different areas in this field who never have talked to each other, never met each other, never have had a chance to discuss with each other on possible development strategies. And I'm talking about people from, from the government, from PTS, from MSB, from, from, from agencies and from the private sector. Uh, we have in EVA sort of tried to organize that kind of meeting places and that have been very positive. And, 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 but one, one sad experience of that is that everybody witnesses that this is something rare. It never happens otherwise, unfortunately. The project is, of course, also focusing on the issue of integrity. And the reason is simple. If, if we as a society want to exploit all of digitalization's possibilities, our citizens must have confidence in the systems and applications. When we use a service, our experience must be that it meets our standards for integrity. We need look no further than the companies that offer services based on individual level data to see that there is a serious imbalance in this market. Companies such as Facebook and Google are entirely dependent on us as individuals, giving them access to information. There are brand new business models and to some extent new markets where the rules of game are somewhat and sometimes unclear. Uh, and the big companies also have, they have monopoly uh, and competitors do not have access to the same amount of data as they have. And this situation raises a series of questions relevant to the integrity discussion. One question is about open data. Today companies and government authorities are able to monopolize access to their basic data. But this should not be taken for granted. A desirable development could be more companies and organizations getting access uh, uh, to this basic data. Maybe only the applications that are trade secret, so to say, should be protected by copyright patents and so on. And the question is whether we can and should try to regulate this or if the market will manage it alone. I hope that we might be able to answer that question, but it's still open. Second, anonymous data. We, we, we look at data collection and data management from an individual, uh, in, in individual's perspective. We assume that it's possible to keep data anonymous. But it could be said that there is no anonymous data. We must at least ask ourselves what we mean by anonymous data. By connecting, using substantial processing capacity and by combining different data volume sources and registers, we can turn anonymous data into information where it's possible to trace individuals. The question is what we can regulate and what we need to do to guarantee personal integrity. While working on the integrity issue, uh, we have also noted how far we have come from the FRA, you know, the National Defense Radio Establishment debate. I guess you remember it. With its emphasis on the absolute integrity of individual. If we just look at how we behave on social media, it's clear that what we are willing to put out about ourselves varies greatly depending on the digital context. One outcome of the work we are doing within the project will likely be proposals on a number uh, uh, of, of um, points of departure, if I may say so, for a continued focus on the integrity issue, especially at the political level. Some of these are the way we view individual integrity in the age of digitalization cannot be absolute. It must depend on the context the individual is in and what he or she 
prioritizes. This is similar to what we choose to talk about and how much we reveal about ourselves depending on whether we are with our immediate family or at work or any other place. The integrity second, of the individual is linked to the fact that we are citizens in a society and how anonymous we can be allowed to be. In Sweden, it's not possible to be completely anonymous. Uh, we need to have a personal identity number, and that system is used to create better social services. At least, it was meant so. Digitalization poses new questions about the information the authorities have about us as individuals based on uh, new ways of analyzing large amounts of data that digitalization makes possible. The integrity discussion needs to take place, bearing in mind aspects such as changes in security systems. If we do not believe that future solutions may help solve the integrity issue, there is a risk that we will prevent research and innovation from happening. And that would be a serious problem for a country like Sweden, where our prosperity is based on research and innovation. We believe that it is extremely important for people to have confidence in the opportunities offered by digitalization and our ability as a society to manage these effects. Raising levels of trust and confidence is both a task for politicians but also for the private sector and for us as individuals. We are also focusing on all aspects of the need for increased competence in this area. This is of course a key issue and we will be emphasizing both the need for digital technology specialists, uh, where I can see some in this room, an area where Sweden has large shortcomings, am I unfortunately, uh, I have to say, and the need for broad digital expertise. Of course. Another important question is what type of knowledge and awareness managers and leaders need to have in order to lead in the era of digitalization. And digitalization is not, as you probably know, only a technology issue. It is a transition that is affecting all of society and it cannot and should, of course, not be avoided or stopped. It is a powerful force driving change based on fantastic technical solutions that are constantly being renewed. But if we as a society are to properly benefit from it, it is essential that those of us working on these issues understand the need to consider the technical opportunities in relation to how they will affect society and, and, and single individuals. To take advantage of the opportunities, we must also pay attention to the problems and risks. And I want to believe that we now, uh, just as during past major changes in society, uh, can influence our own future. You sometimes listen to radio and news and read and, uh, social media, you might hesitate to that uh, sentence, but I still think that we can influence our own future. And these are the opportunities our project intends to highlight. We, we hope to be able to sort of to spark a wide ranging, important and continued debate. We will probably no, not problem. We will not be able to answer all the questions, but we can point at some important questions, try to find some answers, and some, as I said, to spark, hopefully spark, a wide-ranging and continued debate. Thank you. We have time for a couple of quick questions, if anyone has any. Uh, can we have the microphone in the front here, please? Hello. Yeah. Sir, uh, my name is Jorgen Stadje, journalist. Um, 
you went very quickly over the question of education. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that's something you really have to address because the level of education in Sweden today is what what goes against all 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 that you're fighting for, like engineering. Uh, today in Swedish schools, digital technology, technology, physics, chemistry is dangerous. Um, don't touch it. Leave it to the guys in white lab coats somewhere far away, but you know, it's dangerous. Uh, we lack good education. It's, it's horrible to say that about Sweden, but we, we lack good education. I don't like to say that, but, you know, kids are so good with computers today, you know, they can point to their mobile phones. Great. It's, it's not technology. It's guys like Feldström over there. He knows about technology, but <laughs> Swedish schools need a great injection of technology, technical knowledge. This is horrible. And, and it seems like no one is really interested. We have lots of politicians, I know, they talk a lot, but they're not interested in education. And Sweden is based on education. You name a CEA, you name IKEA, you name um, Saab, they're all based on educated people. And we're losing out because schools are so bad and because People are not yeah, yeah, interested. Sorry. It's horrible. Sorry. Okay. That's more of a comment than a question. Would you want to <laughs> respond? No, I, do, I have only one comment. If you should measure the length of different parts of my speech, then it's, uh, of course, I said I had three sentences on uh, security and, uh, and uh, national security. Uh, of course, education is extremely important. and. And uh, one out of three working groups are, are dealing with this. And we'll also publish, of course, a lot of, uh, hopefully, a lot of suggestions. And, and uh, I, I share your criticism. I definitely do. And, and uh, I, I was a bit, I concentrated a bit on, on the question of coordinate, coordination, because I think that we now have a possibility to influence, because we are sort of expecting sooner or later, maybe later, a new government. Uh, so, so that is the reason why we have sort of a little bit made a priority around that. But that does not necessarily mean that we don't think that education is, is a question not worth discussing. On the contrary, I have nothing, I, I, I agree with you. We try to see if we can find some good uh, solutions on the question. Okay, thank you very much. Could you join me again in thanking Jan for his talk?